The deserts of Arabia cover more than a million square miles, and the southern desert occupies nearly half of the total area. The greater part of it is a wilderness of sand. It is a desert within a desert, so enormous and so desolate that even Arabs call it the Rubal Khali, or the empty quarter. During the war, a species of locust called the desert locust had threatened the Middle East with famine. Dr. Uvarov, who was head of the Anti-Locust Research Center in London, thought that some of them might be in southern Arabia. If this was so, the area would almost certainly be an outbreak center. I was to go there and find out. But so little was known about this part of southern Arabia that wherever I went, I could collect no useful information. I arrived in Aden at the end of September 1945, visited the mountains along the Yemen frontier, and on the 15th of October, flew to Salala. As I entered the town of Salala, I passed a small caravan. My attention was caught by the men who led the camels. Min had a jama. Bedu, jai mil badia, mwara li bal hadi. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. حياكم الله تفضل استريح حياك الله تفضل أحسنت قلالة السلطان وصلنا عليك وإحنا طرشنا حق جماعتنا من البدو وإن شاء الله خمسة وأربعين من جماعتهم بربعونك لين مقشن خمسة وأربعين أعتقد تناشى كفاية اثنى عشر ما يسوون شيء حزة الخطر إذا خليون ثلاثين أحسن فارق طيب الثلاثين بيكونون عندك بعد أسبوعين تم تيم جبنا لكم روز سكر قهوة كل هذا الأشياء لرحلتنا بس يا جماعة هذا تجيل وخبر الشاب ما يتحمل تجيل أنا أقول هذا شيء وايد وهذا أسراف المفروض أنكم ما خطيئة يا أقول الملاك أنت الصاحب أبخصب ماله عارف حلاله ما عليك منه when they were nearly ready, I went into the hut where I had been staying and put on my Arab clothes. As this was the first time I had worn Arab dress, I felt extremely self-conscious. They were all small men, and as I am six foot one, I felt as conspicuous as a lighthouse. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح حيا للفلاح الصلاة خير من النوم الصلاة خير من النوم الله أكبر الله أكبر
My companions were always awake and moving about as soon as it was light. It was three months before I returned to Salala. They were hard months of constant travel, during which I learned to admire my companions and to appreciate their skill. They had never heard of the English, for all Europeans were known to them simply as Christian, and nationality had no meaning for them. As I marched along, I reflected that nowhere in the world was a such continuity as in the Arabian desert. Here, Semitic nomads, resembling my companions, must have herded their flocks before the pyramids were built. Successive civilizations rose and fell around the desert's edge. They lasted a few hundred or a thousand years and vanished. New races were evolved and later disappeared. Religions rose and fell. Men changed, adapting themselves to a changing world. But in the desert, the nomad tribes lived on. The pattern of their lives, but little changed over the enormous span of time. The ascendancy of the Bedou was, however, moral as well as physical. Valuing freedom far above ease or comfort, careless of suffering, taking indeed a fierce pride in the hardship of their lives, the Bedou forced an unwilling recognition of their superiority on the villagers and townsmen who hated and affected to despise them. Khalil Nasir al Tara Rijid al Nashaf. يلا عيال وبالمرة نترس اليراب اللي ويانا ما يا سلطان؟ ما اريد عط الشيخ تمطيم خليه يشرب انا ما بشرب مرة لين يجون الجماعة يوم يجون الجماعة عقب انا بشرب اشرب انت الحين تهنى It was on this journey from Salala to Hadramut that I met Salim bin Kabina. Bin Kabina was to be my inseparable companion during the five years I traveled in Southern Arabia. He turned up while we were watering thirsty camels at a well. For two days, we worked day and night in relays. On the second day, he announced that he was coming with me. The sheikhs advised me to take the boy and let him look after my things. When Bandukiatek? When Nagatek? Ma andik Naga? Ella Andi. بس ماتت ماتت؟ قبل شهر صرت أحمل السردين من الساحل وإحنا راجعين ماتت ناقت العيوز وظليت الليل بطولة هبكي عند راسها لكن الحمد لله الله بعثك لي الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الركاب 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 جمعوا الركاب الركاب جمعوا الركاب Everyone was firing. Who were they? There was a general uncertainty. Bin Kamam said he would go forward and find out. They shouted at each other. They had realized their mistakes when they heard us shouting. 
for our voices were not the voices of the enemy. We went forward and embraced each other. Six weeks after leaving Salala, we were in the valley of the Hadramut and rode slowly up the valley to Tarim. We were lavishly entertained, sitting indoors, listening to their folklore music and dance. We ate well, cooked food and drank water that did not taste of goat skin. At last, I went back to London and reported to Dr. Uvarov at the Natural History Museum, wondering anxiously whether I should be able to persuade him to send me back to the empty quarter. The floods from the coastal mountains may seldom reach the edge of the southern sands. And you think the floods from Ghana reach the sands? I have no idea, but I'll go and find out. I wish you could. The trouble is, we've already asked the Sultan for his permission and... He wouldn't hear any of it. Ask the consulate Muscat to get permission to go over there and leave the rest on me. But for God's sake, don't mention a man or anywhere else. Just Mugshin. All right. I'll try. Now I will be able to cross the empty quarter. The Bedus were waiting for me in Salala when I returned in October 1946. I sent a message to Bin Kabina and certain others of his people to join me at Shisur. We had left Salala with ample rations, but my companions, after leaving some with their families, had, with their customary improvidence, used up most of what remained. We now divided what we had. Our share was about 200 pounds of flour, enough rice for two meals, a few handfuls of maize, some onions, and a little butter, coffee, tea, and sugar. This must last at least a month. It worked out at half a pound of flour a day for each of us. We were going to be very hungry. <laughs> بعد ما فركونا بالسمن والزعفران الجماعة تعدوا بس أنا الدم ما وقف عني وعقب ثمانة أيام يوم وقف الدم ظنوا هل إني مت وين ما خاف 
مبلا الكل يخاف من الوجع بس ما حد يقول ولاني اصغرهم واولهم فالشيبه بدا بي ربط القلفه بخيط قوي ومشدود وسكينته ما هي بحاده له كل شوي يسنها كل شوي يسنها والله من قصها ارتاح ترتاح وهم واحد من الربع وقع مغشي عليه حطوا دواء للجره اي بالله حطوا ملح ورماد وخرا بعير وكان يحرق يحرق من متى تعرف اني ما على شركيه أعرفها من سنتين وهي قبال من الرمال المتلاحقة وإذا عبرنا عروق الشيبة ترى وصلنا للظفرة وهناك ليوة ليوة أم النخيل والماء يومين مسيرها على النوق ما تكفيك تشوفها كلها وإن شاء الله نعبرها بعد شهر لكن ذي الجمال ما ظنتي تعبر لي عروق الشيبة في درب حوليها مبلا إذا سرنا غرب عن طريق دكاكة الأوف في أمل نسادي في مراي في دربنا إن شاء الله الله العالم من بقى شيء منها لأنها مطرت قبل سنتين وإن شاء الله لا بد نلاقي شيء منها The sun was getting low Bin Kabina was still asleep I touched him to wake him and in one moment he was on his feet with his dagger drawn I had forgotten that to touch a sleeping Bedo is usually to jerk him awake, ready instinctively to fight for his life. We raced down the dune and walked across to the well where the others were ready for our departure. ترى سلطان ما من وراه غير البلاء يا ربع قربوا قربوا تعالوا قربوا ترى انا تشاورنا وهذا الركاب ما يب شديده وما ظن انه توصل لحد الظفره وانا من رايي نلحق جماعتنا في الساحل الجنوبي ونصيد غزلان ترى لا الاكل يكفي ولا الماء يكفي الهل ستة نكمل مع أسنا النقاط وستة البكين يرجعون ستة ما يكفي والصوب الثاني في لصوص وحرامية وقطعين طرق من حولين يا جماعة راحوا جماعتنا وساروا لحد حد الظفرة وما حد من لم رجع وأنا من رأي يا جماعة يا نسير جميع يا نرجع جميع وين تلوف بتصير ماي اللي خبره إن سايرين للظفرة وين بغيتني دلي تراني معك وين تبين كبينة؟ ني وياك ما ودرك وين تمسلم؟ ني معك زي ما بخوت وصل وبيروح معنا اعتقد نقطه ونهيله حنا ادرى بالنيوب وهي قادر على المسير سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا وما كنا له مقرنين وانا الى ربنا لمنقلبون يا رب سهل دربنا يا رب
I was happy in the company of these men who had chosen to come with me. I felt affection for them personally and sympathy with their way of life. But though the easy equality of our relationship satisfied me, I did not delude myself that I could be one of them. They were Bedou and I was not. They were Muslims and I was a Christian. Nevertheless, I was their companion and an inviolable bond united us, as sacred as the bond between host and guest, transcending tribal and family loyalties. Because I was their companion on the road, they would fight in my defense even against their brothers and they would expect me to do the same. The society in which the Bedou live is tribal. Everyone belongs to a tribe and all members of the same tribe are to some degree kinsmen since they are descended from a common ancestor. The closer the relationship, the stronger is the loyalty which a man feels for his fellow tribesmen, just as they, in like case, support him. There is no security in the desert for an individual outside the framework of his tribe. الارقوب عالي ولا بد اللي في حوله دي شغلة العوف وهو من يبنى هني لو انت دليلنا كنا سيرنا مسافة بايدة مشكور وما قصرت وذي زي اني سرت معك It was now that al Alf showed his skill. The fear of this great obstacle had lain like a shadow on my mind ever since al Alf had first warned me of it. They were unscalable, for the sand was poised always on the verge of avalanching. It was possible to force a circuitous way up these slopes, but not for the camels, and from below it was difficult to judge the steepness. Very slowly, a foot at a time, he made his way upward. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Tatuwaka ya bin kabina ena nahna. Na bar bihad al jamal. Fog hadar al gub. Ma bannati ta'abar al jamal hal al gub. Dam al gub ma'ana. Tara bay dabbarha. يلا يا جماعة توكلنا
بنروح المغرب يا جماعه وبادرك الشيبه في مشاكل جديده في الدار نوصلها اذا ما واجهتنا مشكله الليله وين نوصل عروق الشيبه عساك ما ظنيت يا مبارك عبرنا عروق الشيبه هذا الا عراقيب وان شاء الله نواجهها باكر الليله نريح ويا الركاب وباكر بعون الله نروح وعروق الشيبه ما هي بعيده We were faced by a range as high as, perhaps even higher, than the range we had crossed the day before. But here, the peaks were steeper and more pronounced, rising in many cases to great pinnacles, down which the flowing ridges swept like draperies. Although it was killing work, my companions were always gentle and infinitely patient. As I struggled up the slope, knee deep in shifting sands, my heart thumped wildly and my thirst grew worse. I knew that it would be many intolerable hours before I could drink. بس 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 I wondered how much more these camels would stand for they were trembling violently Sometimes one of them would lay down and refuse to rise. We led the trembling, hesitating animals upwards along great sweeping ridges where the knife edge crests crumbled beneath our feet. نسوا تونس يا مبارك ترانا عبرنا عروق الشيبة وهذه وهذا عراقيب سهلة إن شاء الله نلف حواليها
We started very early in the morning and rode without stopping for seven hours across the sands, still exhausted from the strain of long hours of yesterday. But Alauf encouraged us by saying that the worst was over. The dunes were certainly lower than they had been, more uniform in height and more rounded. Suddenly, we were challenged by an Arab lying behind a bush on the crest of the dune. Antoman! Wagaf, Father Ahmed Bana! هذا حامد بالهنا واحد من شيوخنا ليش لوحدك هنا كنت في البر أدور على ناقة اللي ويوم شفت أذاركم قلت والله أن هذه الجماعة غازي من الجنوب وش رأيكم ندخل ليوا نتزود بالماء ترى ليوا تخص البو فلاح هالبو ظبي والعربان كلها في حرب وغزو وكل منا يدع على سلاحه ونحن لازم نفتح عيوننا زين حن عيوننا ما تنام أنا برابعكم لليوا حق مونتكم هي نعم لاني انا خابر بدونه فيهم الزين والشين منها بعد شيء ماي في هذا الدرب الخوف مو من الماي وانا اخوك الخوف من المونة لا بد ان تكون كافية وترى يا مبارك ان وصلنا لي وابشر بالشباب هناك كل شيء متوفر هي نعم يا غير يبالنا ثلاث اربعة ايام نوصل لي حتى نوصل هناك نجو مثل جمل دام انه يا الربع وصلنا عمان هناك مشكلتنا والمشكلة انه يا جماعة الخير اذا دروا انه فيانا مبارك هو اللي مشكلتنا ترى هي المعضلة هو المصيبة نعم وان دروا اكثر شيء عاده ان فيانا نحن ناصراني ما بيخلونا نعذر الدرب يا الربع اسمعوا مني ان التقينا ويا العربان ترانا بدو من حضر موت تسمعون سايرين بو ظبي ومبارك ترى عربي من عدن سمعتوا اتفقنا 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 3 days after leaving Khaba we reached the Batin and lay up in the dunes near Balak well Next morning, Hamad and Bin Kabina went to the settlement in Liwa to buy food. They returned from Liwa three days later. They were three interminable nights and days. I had almost persuaded myself that I was conditioned to starvation. After all, I had been hungry for weeks. For the first day, my hunger was only a more insistent feeling of familiar emptiness, something like a toothache I could partly overcome by an effort of will. I woke in the grey dawn, craving for food, but by lying on my stomach and pressing down, I could achieve a semblance of relief. I dozed and dreamt of food. I woke and thought of food. I tried to read, but it was difficult to concentrate. A moment's slackness, and I was thinking once more of food. 
I thought of the supplies of food which Bin Kabina would bring with him, and of the goat which we should eat. But the next day dragged out till sunset, and they did not come. We got nothing, said Bin Kabina when they came. There is nothing to be had in Liwa. We had two packages of bad dates and a little wheat. شفت اثر ريوله وهو داخل وماشي اثر طلوع رأيون الضيوف يا جماعة تفضلوا تفضلوا يا جماعة قربوا قربوا يا جماعة لا والله ما يصير ذا الكلام أنتم إلا ضيوفنا تفضلوا 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 يا جماعة تفضلوا
خلونا نشرب وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله حيا بالضيوف هلا وسهلا يا عيال يبو الحمراء مسنتين عشان نحلبها بسرعة يا عيال يلا بسرعة الضيوف يتريون إلا قول وين سايرين؟ سايرين حارب ويا البو فلاح الله يحفظكم وينصركم إن شاء الله We set off once more Each interminable empty day ended at sunset and started again at dawn The others ate dates before we started but I could no longer face their sticky sweetness and I fasted till the evening meal Conversation died with the passing hours and boredom mounted within me like a dull ache of pain. On the 31st of January, 1947, we reached Bai, where the others were waiting for us. We had parted from them at Mugshin on the 24th of November. It seemed like two years. Marahaba, marahaba, marahaba. Marahaba, sahla, Allah hayyam. يا مرحبا بمبارك يا مرحبا بمبارك وربعة يا هلا وسهلا السلام عليكم حياكم يا هلا يا هلا اهلا اهلا بخير الله يخليك ماشي خبر الله يسلم عبرون عن خبر خير كل شيء بخير جماعة سامحونا ترى الجماعة فشلونا فيكم وفضحونا فيكم واتركوا مبارك عند رملة الغابة وونا نرجوكم سامحونا سامحونا يا جماعة مسموح جيتك عزيزة يا شيخ عز الله مقامك يا مرحبا Many Englishmen have written about camels When I open a book to see the familiar disparagement I realize that the author's knowledge of them is slight that he has never lived among the Bedou, who know the camel's worth. At Allah, or God's gift, they call her, and it is her patience that wins the Arab heart. I have never seen a Bedou ill-treat a camel. Always the camel's needs come first. It is not only that the Bedou's existence depends on the welfare of his animals, but that he has a real affection for them. To Arabs, camels are beautiful, and they derive as great a pleasure from looking at a good camel as some get from looking at a good horse. There is indeed a tremendous feeling of power, rhythm and grace about these great beasts. They have different names for the different breeds and colors, for riding camels and herd camels, and a different term in each year of its life until it is fully grown. All camel's milk tastes slightly salty, and no Bedou drinks standing. They squat down to drink. Camel's milk is their food and drink. As long as there is plenty of milk, the Bedou want nothing more. These Bedou allow a camel to suckle her calf without interference for about six weeks. They then cover her udder with a bag, only allowing the calf to drink before they milk her in the morning and evening. They wean it after nine months. A camel will remain in milk for as long as four years, provided she is not served by a bull. She may have as many as a dozen calves and has a working life of about 20 years. It was on this trip from Salala to Makulla that I met this boy with a face of classic beauty. Rather sad and pensive in repose, it lit up when he smiled. 
His name was Salim bin Gabesha. Bin Kabina urged me to let him join us, saying he was the best shot in the tribe. He is my friend. For my sake, let him come with us. The two of us will go wherever you desire. I told him he could come and handed him one of the rifles. I returned to Arabia with the intention of crossing the western sands. I arrived in Makulla on the 3rd of November and stayed for a few days with Shepherd and collected the rifles and ammunition which I had left with him the year before. I went up to Sewum where I stayed with Watts, the political officer. I sent a telegram to Bin Gabesha to travel to Hadramud by aeroplane. In Hadramud, I spent the next two months traveling among the Saar. We went up to Radat al Saar, a mountainous cliff about 200 yards across, running through a green valley. On the cliffs we saw buildings, many of them empty. We were told many of their inhabitants had died in the Great Famine in 1943. The valley was green with crops and trees. The Saar, many of whom were collected in the Radat to harvest the crops, had heard of my wanderings in southern Arabia and welcomed me with great friendliness. We visited the well at Manwach. There was a very lovely girl working with others on the well. During the following days, my companions chaffed me whenever I was silent, saying that I was thinking of the girl at Manwach, which was frequently true.
Next day, we traveled across the Jalida Plain. I realized that our real difficulties were only now beginning. Fortunately, the prevailing winds were different from those in the sands of the south, and in consequence, the easier slopes faced south. Even so, they imposed a severe strain on our tired camels. They had had only one full meal in the 11 days since we left Manwach. Khaliha alai, khaliha alai. Idrub, idrub, idrub sa, idrub qabil latfur, idrub, idrub. Hey, Ambarak, khataita. Lo khalaita al bengabesha, kana kana al leila. Ya khasara. هذا ما هو بعدل يا مبارك نيلو منك يكون طلقتها شو كزدك ترى عند البدو لو قعت العصا أكثر من ثلاث مرات ترى مرتك تخونك بدو notice everything and forget nothing garrulous by nature they reminisce endlessly whiling away with their chatter the long marching hours and talking late into the night round their campfires. Their life is at all times desperately hard and they are merciless critics of those who fall short in patience, good humor, generosity, loyalty or courage. They make no allowance for the stranger. Whoever lives with a Bedou must accept Bedou conventions and conform to Bedou standards. Only those who have journeyed with them can appreciate the strain of such a life. These tribesmen are accustomed since birth to the physical hardships of the desert, to drink the scanty bitter water of the sands, to eat gritty unleavened bread, to endure the maddening irritation of driven sand, intense cold, heat and blinding glare in a land without shade or cloud. الله حيهم قرب قرب تقهوى قرب مرحبا قرب تقهوى قرب يلا قوموا امشوا معاي تهبى وتخسى انت يا الكافر يشرب قهوتك تف عليك تراكم مو بحسن منا لانكم بعتوا نفسكم له ولا الشيطان علشان الفلوس مالي مالي يلا خلينا نمشي والحين يلا امشي قدامي وش بلا يلا امشي خلينا نمشي يلا يلا
The oasis extended for about two miles along the Wadi Dawasia, and the settlement itself consisted of five small villages. On our way to the village where the Amir lived, the guard led us down narrow, twisting lanes. Some men called out, asking who we were, and he answered scornfully, an infidel with his servants. We stopped at the Amir's house. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Ya marhab. Kayf al Ya marhab al rab. Ya marhab. Ya marhab. Ya marhab. Allah hayyum. Allah hayyum. Allah hayyum. Marhab. Marhab ya rab. Marhab ya rab. Marhab. Asma'u ya rab. Tara ghadakum wiyana. Wa tarakum la bid dhalun fi al-sirir. Liman min Saud. Allah yatawil bi'umrah. Wa yabji. Yatar shamrah fiikum. Wa al-hayy. Ya hayykum. Ya hayykum. Wa al-wala. يا ولا ولا يا ولا ولا تراكم محظوظين وصلتم السلامة ونشد ونشد لأن كثير من العربان راح للغرب يدورون على الكلا ولو واحد شافكم وعرفكم من الجنوب لكان بلغ عنكم ولا ولا يا ولا ولا يا ولا ولا بن سعود أمرنا نحجزكم ونأخذ بنادقكم سامحونا هذا وامر الملك لكن بخليك تلد برخيه للملك وعسى خير السلام عليكم يا السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام وراك وراك لا تحاتي لا تحاتي عسى خير ان شاء الله هذو هذو النصراني هذو 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 النصراني 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 We were in a bare room at the top of the castle. Bin Gabesha and Bin Kabina, silent and depressed, were lying down, and I wondered if they were asleep. Every now and again, I could hear a wheel creaking on a well, but on looking out of the window, could see nothing but a drab plain. من وين جيت وليش؟ جينا من هدرمود كنا نسيد المها في ربع الخالي يوم ماينا قراب ينتهي جينا للهسي لأن البدو اللي مانا لا يعرفون البلد عجل شلون وصلت الحسي؟ عندي خاطرات عبد الله فيلبي وفيها إشارة للهسي وعندي كذلك اثنين من البدو يدلونها لأنه جايين من قبل للجران وإذا في لوم تراني مسؤول وليس جماعتي ولا 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 ابشر ابشر يا مبارك عبد الله فيليب تكلم يا الملك لصالحك وسمح لك طال عمرك تكمل دربك لكن وين ان شاء الله سايرين حق الخبره يا جماعه خلوني دليلكم لجبرين 
وشلون وهذا أول مرة لك بهالبلاد عندي خالتة عبد الله فيلبي وعندي بوسالة ترشدنا بس هالدرب لا معالم ولا علامات وما هي منطقة مكشوفة مثل جدة الحراسيس والبدوان يندلون البير وانت لازم يبي لك دليل يا مبارك يمكن نلقي حد من البدوان في دربنا وين البدوان يا مبارك والصحراء خالية مثل ما تعارف ما نزل علينا المطر السنة بحسلة وأنا أكتر منكم خايف أموت من العطش ورأيك كم يوم بناخذ بهالدرب ثمان أيام وهم ذا رأيكم يا جماعة مبين تراه دليل زين وما هو براي أن ننتم هنا لكن نشوف انتبعه والله كريم It often seemed incredible to me, especially when I was on foot and conscious of the steps I was taking, that we could ever cover such enormous distances going at this pace. Sometimes I counted my footsteps to a bush or to some other mark, and this number seemed but a trifle deducted from the sum that lay ahead of us. Yet I had no desire to travel faster. In this way, there was time to notice things, a grasshopper under a bush, a dead swallow on the ground, the tracks of a hare, a bird's nest, the shape and color of ripples on the sand, the bloom of tiny seedlings pushing through the soil. There was time to collect a plant or to look at a rock. The very slowness of our march diminished its monotony. I thought how terribly boring it would be to rush about this country in a car. إذا حسابي صحيح ترانا قريبين من البير والله إنك دليل يا مبارك ما استوى مثيلة
we stayed for 20 days at Abu Dhabi, a small town of about 2,000 inhabitants. Each morning, the sheikhs visited us, walking slowly across from the castle. Sheikh Shakbud, a stately figure in a black cloak, a little ahead of his brothers, followed by a throng of armed retainers. We talked for an hour or more, drinking coffee and eating sweets. And after they had left us, we visited the market, where we sat cross-legged in the small shops, gossiping and drinking more coffee. Or we wandered along the beach and watched the dowers being coked and treated with shark oil to prepare them for the pearling season. Buremi was about a hundred miles away and it took us four days to get there. We had plenty of food and were no longer tired and there was good grazing. Next morning, we approached Muwaji. It was here that Sheikh Zayed lived. He was a powerfully built man of about 30 with a brown beard. He had a strong, intelligent face with steady, observant eyes, and his manner was quiet but masterful. I had been looking forward to meeting him, for he had a great reputation among the Bedou. They liked him for his easy, informal ways and his friendliness and they respected his force of character, his shrewdness, and his physical strength. They said, admiringly, Zayed is a Bedou. He knows about camels. He can ride like one of us, can shoot, and knows how to fight. I told Sheikh Zayed of my plans to visit the interior of Oman, and he promised to help me when I came back in autumn. I stayed with Sheikh Zayed for nearly a month. I returned to Baremi, visited the Liwa oasis, and went hawking with Sheikh Zayed. The falcon was flying a few feet above the ground. The bustard seemed to be flying quite slowly with unhurried beats of its great wings, yet the peregrine was evidently flying its fastest, rapidly overhauling it. Eventually, there were faint specks, not easily picked up again once they had been lost sight of. Then someone shouted, it's down! We came upon the peregrine plucking at the lifeless bird. One of the men covered the corpse to hide it and lifted the puzzled-looking falcon back onto his wrist. I planned to complete my travels in southern Arabia by exploring Amman. I traveled with my companions through the country, eventually reaching the Wadi Alain, where a pursuit party had camped nearby. من الجماعة يا سطيون سليمان من خارس وبعض شيوخ القبائل الأخير تصير يمهم تخبر وش يبغون أحسن لنا نثب لهم شرع القبائل ورفقتها ما تتوالم مع النصارى أنا ما قد صارخ الدور مشاكل الرجال ما هو موذي والقبائل كلها تعرفه وما يعتون عنه الا بالخير وانا اعرفه قعدوا ويانا عشرة ايام والريال ترى ما من اذيه وخوف بالعكس الريال ساعدنا وما قصر وانت تراك ما تعرفه عجل رجعوه ترى انا ما اريده واذا مر مره ثانيه من هنا ترى انا بنقتله ما هو بعد لمنك الكلام والله العظيم لا اخذ منطقتنا غصبا عليك وعلى باقي شرق القبائل وما حد ترى يقدر يوقفني زين خذوا النصراني جنوب صابوا مسميم الين تطلعون من مناطقنا لكن لا تروون من ابارنا ترى النصراني لابد يطلع باكر الصبح ترى لا بجينا لا باكر لابد من قتال 
Alafdal, Nugadar Bacha Sub. In Dubai, I stayed in a large Arab house overlooking the creek which divided the town, the largest on the Trucial coast, with about 25,000 inhabitants. Many native craft were anchored in the creek or were careened on the mud along the waterfront. Naked children romped in the shallows and rowing boats patrolled the creek to pick up passengers from the mouths of alleys between high coral houses. Behind the diversity of houses which lined the waterfront were the souks, covered passageways where merchants sat in the gloom cross-legged in narrow alcoves among their piled merchandise. Having come to Dubai by car, they had no camels to worry about. Meanwhile, they found it pleasant to sit about fully fed and with nothing to do but wander into the souk and gossip in the shops. It's rather pathetic that this is all they have. Thank you very much, Mbarak. 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 A cloud gathers, the rain falls, men live. The cloud disperses without rain and men and animals die. In the deserts of southern Arabia, there is no rhythm of the seasons, no rise and fall of sap, but empty wastes where only the changing temperature marks the passage of the year. It is a bitter, desiccated land which knows nothing of gentleness or ease. Yet men have lived there since earliest times. No man can live this life and emerge unchanged. He will carry, however faint, the imprint of the desert, the brand which marks the nomad, and he will have within him the yearning to return, weak or insistent, according to his nature. For this cruel land can cast a spell which no temperate clime can match. I went to Southern Arabia only just in time. Others will go there to study geology and archaeology, the birds and plants and animals, even to study the Arabs themselves. But they will move about in cars and will keep in touch with the outside world by wireless. They will bring back results far more interesting than mine, but they will never know the spirit of the land, nor the greatness of the Arabs. If anyone goes there now, looking for the life I led, they will not find it. Although I had no political or economic interest in the country, few people accepted the fact that I traveled there for my own pleasure. I knew that I had made my last journey in the empty quarter and that a phase in my life was ended. Here in the desert, I had found all that I asked. I knew that I should never find it again. I realized that the Bedou, with whom I had lived and traveled, and in whose company I had found contentment, were doomed. Some people maintain that they will be better off when they have exchanged the hardship and poverty of the desert for the security of a materialistic world. This I do not believe. 
I shall always remember how often I was humbled by those illiterate herdsmen who possessed in so much greater measure than I generosity and courage, endurance, patience, and light-hearted gallantry. Among no other people have I ever felt the same sense of personal inadequacy. For me, exploration was a personal venture. I did not go to the Arabian desert to collect plants, nor to make a map. Such things were incidental. I went there to find peace in the hardship of desert travel and the company of desert people. I set myself a goal on these journeys, and although the goal itself was unimportant, its attainment had to be worth every effort and sacrifice. No, it is not the goal, but the way there that matters. And the harder the way, the more worthwhile the journey.